day 31. This is going to be a relaxed episode for us. Yeah. We don't even have to, like, read anything. Yeah. Yeah, it should be easy. This is going to be, like, cannibalizing a bunch of blues. Cannibalizing. I wish there was an item that, like, made your Pikmin flowered. It'd just be efficient. Be a fish. Like you said, Pikmin upgrades, you know? Upgrade the onions so that, like, when you when you take Pikmin out of it, it, like, has a flower, you know? Like, they get flowers automatically. And then, like, they could lose them in the field by getting knocked off of enemies or, like, blown around, but, like, they got them. Still. It'd be helpful. You guys know about, um, Mario Kart Wii? What about it? I've heard of it. So, uh, yeah, like, apparently, you know, they're... What the fuck? Oh. Um, there are characters in Mario, like, Mario Kart Wii has different characters, and it's not, like, custom carts yet. So, a lot of, like, balance relies on, like, the characters themselves. Um, and apparently Funky Kong is just, like, the best character. Like, he's, like, the highest tier character. I, I, I have some, like, speedrun videos. But... Yeah, like, they do with Funky Kong. Funky Kong and, like, the Bowser bike. Like, uh... A potential serious idea I thought of. I don't know how good of an idea this is, but like playing Mario Kart Wii, you know, from scratch with the goal of like unlocking the whole roster. I don't know how you do that. Actually. I don't really know either, but I know it's like. Oh fuck. Well. I know you have to do some yeah, challenges. Hey. Uh yeah, I don't know what challenges you have to do. That I never unlocked the full roster in my personal file. Where are the white boys at? You just wait. <laughs> we'll delve with you later. Oh, fuck. No, no. Uh, 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 hey, electricity. Electricity is the worst. Pikmin 3, they like straight nerfed electricity. They were like, no, it doesn't kill instantly anymore. But in this game, they were just like, yeah, electricity sucks. Kills you instantly. Fuck you. I mean, on a conceptual level, I appreciate electricity being an insta kill. But in Pikmin 3, I think they nerfed it too much. It's just, electricity isn't like poison or fire, where it like sticks on the leaf, you know, and you can like whistle them off of it. It'd be like, how do you stick electricity on the leaf? I mean, they could just do that. They could just animate that. It would look fine. Yeah, I guess. Whew. I love Pikmin, but man, Pikmin sucks. What about this time? <laughs> it's mostly just like these enemies are dickish as hell. Mm. So like like the perfect game would be a game that is somewhere between Pikmin 3 and Pikmin 2 difficulty. Because like Pikmin 2 is easily the hardest game. Where in the is series. Pikmin 1 on that scale? Eh. It's I would, a hard game, right? I would say easier than Pikmin 3, but not as hard as Pikmin 2. Wait, so or, no, sorry. Um, Pikmin 3 is easier. Yeah. Like, so you're saying that Pikmin 1 is is the perfect Pikmin game in terms of difficulty. Yeah, but it's so simple and boring. Because <laughs> it's just the three primary colors. Like, the, the cool thing about Pikmin 2 that I really like is I like the dungeons a lot. Like, they're all really interesting and unique. They have treasures and, like, they take away the time aspect. And, like, I get that the time aspect is really crucial to Pikmin, but I, I like the puzzle solving a lot more when I have all the time I want to think about removing obstacles and, like, going about them in a safe way as opposed to, like, panicking, uh, which the timer kind of induces on its own. Um, uh, motherfucker. Speaking of obstacles and panicking, was he? He's just oh, okay. there. Like, uh, I'm, I'm glad I didn't say it. But like a minute ago, I was thinking of saying, "Oh yeah, but at least the water wraith hasn't showed up." <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, you know, he would have opened. He he would have showed up. Oh, he ran over those for me. All right, mad dash. Let's go. Wait, no, that's not open. Fuck, I'm stupid. I mean, yeah, I, I like the dungeons a lot, and like the Pikmin three to me is a worse game for not having them. Even though, you know, it's a very beautiful- oh, shit. Can you come in here? Oh, ooh, ooh, okay, huh. all right. This, this is working at the moment. 
Come on, guys. <laughs> we out. Um, but I mean, you know, Pikmin 3 is good. Very beautiful game. Um, but like, a little, uh, some of the things they do in it I don't like. Um, I really don't like the fact that a lot of bosses have a health cap. So like, you know, when you, you'll, you'll knock a boss down from its like thing to where it's vulnerable. Um, and then you'll throw Pikmin on it, right? And then once that happens, the Pikmin are only going to be able to do so much damage before the boss like shakes them off completely and gets up and goes back to doing its thing. And then you have to go through like two or three phases per boss, like no matter what. Yeah. And I don't like that. I like what they do in Pikmin 2 a lot more, which is just like, you know, the boss, if you, if you know how to destroy the boss, you will destroy the boss kind of deal. I appreciate that far more. So I feel like in a lot of ways, the, the boss health cap is artificial difficulty. Because it, it's just making it longer. There's no reason other than like making your boss feel cooler, I guess. I think it's more memorable if you really prepare yourself. Like, if a boss really destroys you the first time, but you, like, prepare yourself, and you're like, okay, I know how to deal with this boss at the time, and then you do that, as opposed to the Pikmin 3 experience would be a boss really destroys you the first time, so you go, okay, I'm prepared now, and then you go into the boss again on another run, or you come back to try to kill it on another day, and it's like, all right, well, you know how to avoid its patterns, but you're still going to take just as long to defeat it or get its health down because it has that health cap. So it's gonna force you to go through a few cycles no matter what. Would it be better implemented, do you think, if instead of just automatically, you know, like, automatically sh shaking all the Pikmin off at certain intervals, and if instead, at certain intervals, it had like a big attack that would kill all your Pikmin if you didn't, you know, like whistle them back to safety. Yeah, I think that works. Um, because they do that, they kind of did that with the Quaggled Mireclops. Um, because you remember the Quaggled Mireclops when we when we fought it. One thing that it does is when it gets to lower health, its tongue attack that it does is like big get off me sweep. It starts going around it more than once. So like normally it would cover like you know like a half circle of the the body um on top of it but like once it got to lower hp it would cover like the entire thing as a circle and then like it would even do multiple go arounds that's good like having an evolving boss fight in which the like animal you're fighting actually gets more desperate to kill you because it's dying that's that would that's really good um, but they don't really do that that often. And, I mean, that's understandable. In, in especially Pikmin 1 and 2, which are like GameCube era games. It's like, it's impressive that they can even have this many Pikmin on screen. I do miss the, 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 the blah, 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 in Pikmin 3. I think that's more fun than the charge command. Even if the charge command is way more efficient. <laughs> oh, well, I thought you just meant like the sound effect. I mean, that too. <laughs> What's the difference in, in the mechanics? Well, the, the mechanic here is you, you would use your C stick or your down down on the D-pad plus aim to like, you, you are actively forcing your Pikmin in a line. And while that is active, like while it's horning, the Pikmin will interact with whatever is interactable while they were being made to go in that direction. So you're like directionally influencing where they can go. And then you're also making them interact in a way that isn't throwing. And in Pikmin 3, uh, you, they, they introduced the whole lock-on system, right? So this, uh, they made it so instead you could lock onto something like a wall or an enemy, and then you could say, charge, and all of your Pikmin, not all of your Pikmin, because in the remaster they made it, originally it was all your Pikmin in the remaster, it's by group, which sucks because you have to do it multiple times if you want them to go, actually. Um, but they, they made it so that, you know, the group of Pikmin will then charge when you do it, and they will all go and attack slash interact with whatever you're locked onto. Uh, but you have to lock on for that to work, which is a detriment, I think. Because even though the lock on system is cool, it really messes up a lot of enemies. Um, and the charge mechanic itself is sort of like, it's, it's kind of too heavy handed for me. And they added the dodge whistle, which is a really cool thing on paper. 
Um, but it really, in my opinion, it is just a kind of shittier replacement to the amount of movement you have. Because, like, the Zod Whistle is, is cool. It lets you move your Pikmin out of harm's way. But, like, this, the idea that you can, like, tell your squad to go around in different ways. So, like, using this command, you can do things like hug walls to, like, get past enemies. Or, you like, what we do with the Water Wraith a lot. I think that's a lot more flexible than the Charge Command or the Dodge Whistle is. And I do think that, like, it, it was a, it's a better overall mechanic than what they did in Pikmin 3. I mean, the other thing with Pikmin 3 is, like, the new lock-on targeting system is, like, okay, it's cool, right? I like that, especially because it, it actually has a reason. You know, it, it appears in the corner that shows you, like, what you're locked onto. So, like, you lock onto a... A spectralid and Olimar's like, yep, yeah, that's a spectralid, and you're like, oh, that's the name of this enemy. That's cool, right? Um, but at the same time, when you lock on to them, right? Because the thing is, Pikmin's controls are clunky when it's not motion control, because it's a, it was a GameCube game. So this this game was meant to run on GameCube, um, and I I cannot imagine comfortably pay, playing Pikmin on a GameCube controller where you can't point at the screen. Um, but hey, uh, but you know, they, they said this is going to be on the Wii U. Most people are going to be playing this on the gamepad. So we do have to find a way to make the controls less clunky. And the thing they did was they did the, the charge and like lock on system. Uh, but the thing that I've been getting to is I don't like the lock on system, uh, because there's a lot of enemies in Pikmin that naturally reward accuracy, uh, like smaller enemies, even when it's not a purple Pikmin, if you bop them right on the noggin, they die instantly, right? Like bulborbs and stuff, or like shear grubs. Um, and that's a mechanic that, like I said, it rewards accuracy specifically. Uh, and they've always been that way, and they retain those mechanics even when there's a lock-on system that will do that already. So, like, instead of having a enemy that has a few more dimensions in that, you know, you, you lock onto it and you're like, okay, now I... Uh, what? Pfft. Instead of having an enemy where there's multiple dimensions of, you can charge a Bulborb, like a tiny one, um, and you'll probably lose some Pikmin, but you'll definitely kill it. Or you could try throwing some Pikmin at it, which is throwing less bodies technically at it, and you'll probably kill it a little bit slower, but there's a really good chance that if you're accurate enough with your throw, you squash them on the head and they die instantly. And that's a lot more interesting than, oh, there's three bulb orbs in a row, lock on throw, lock on throw, lock on throw, all three are dead now because I couldn't miss any of them with my throw. Hi, w welcome to Pork Chips's, uh video essay where he plays Pikmin 2 in the background and talks about Pikmin. <clears throat> I left some guys behind there they go. Ugh. But yeah, those are those are my Pikmin opinions. Pikmin min pick Pikmin means. There you go. Like what if they did just make a like you know a a, a game that was a Pikmin like you know, but with minions branding. I feel like I'm surprised that doesn't exist. You know, despite how asshole, assholishly this dungeon is designed, it is also very well designed in concept. The idea of limiting the amount of Pikmin and then putting the exit so often behind, like, walls and stuff. It's very good. And then it's probably the dungeon that uses Bulbmin the best out of any of them. Because it's forcing you to need their services as Pikmin that are immune to hazards that blues aren't. This might be probably both the most frustrating and the most intelligently designed dungeon in the game. Just in terms of like overall thought process put into it. People make like blogs or like followings based around disliking things. I I'm thinking of this because like yesterday I was on the Tumblr. Um, <clears throat> I had to say it like an asshole, I guess. Uh, but I was on Tumblr. And I, I saw, I found a blog, because uh, I was looking at the Konosuba tag, because sometimes I like looking at tags of things that I enjoy. Um, and Konosuba is pretty hard to spoil and has a lot of people making good art and also horny art, but like, whatever, not mutually exclusive. Um, and one thing I found was a, a meme uh, about like Aqua, because there, there's a bunch of memes about Aqua, because she's like, you know, oh, hi, she's the useless goddess, right? Um, but it, it was about 
it, it was about how Aqua is a useless goddess, but an, Persephone from the Lore Olympus webcomic is an even worse goddess. Um, and it was a blog entirely dedicated to disliking and like shitting on Lore Olympus specifically. And it's like, how much free time have you got? <laughs> Uh, yeah, like, you know, hate, like, hate blogs are, you know, not healthy for anyone involved, like. Yeah, really. You know, as probably, especially for the people who run them. I can't imagine, because the thing is, too, in, in that same blog, this person was, like, posting, oh, fuck, uh, this person was, like, posting art like like they would they would be reblogging posts that are like lore olympus sucks and it's it's sexist and shows like a bad relationship between yada yada right but at the same time this person would be posting things that's like i made art of my lore olympus ocs wait really yes oh uh, wow well that's fine man <laughs> well it's just it's like are you in a fandom is this like a counter fandom well okay like you can i mean <laughs> what is going on here I mean, like, holy fuck. it's not the exact same thing, but like, you know, I, I do know people who go on, you know, rants about things they like. I mean, yes. Negative rants about things they like. I do that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, like, not to, not, not to the degree that you would make a hate blog for it. But. Yeah, no. Like, because the thing is, you get it out of your system when you, when you do a rant, at least, like in real life. If you like something, you can have a lot to say about it, and that's a good thing. But like, oh my fucking god. I, I guess it's a pretty low form of entertainment to ask strangers what the fuck they're doing on the inter internet. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, normally I wouldn't really, like... Wouldn't give the time of day to anything that a hate blog has to say. Yeah, that's fair. Like, specifically... You know, if, if they're if they're dedicating their whole, you know, like a lot of their time to like hating on something and whatever. Yeah. Well, I will say though, I have I have heard some bad stuff about Lore Olympus. I've heard that it uses like a lot of harmful tropes and stuff. Mm. Eh. I mean, I'm a fan of Lore Olympus. I just, I mean, it does use tropes. I can see how they would be bad, but like, it's so very obviously written to try to be like compelling while also sensitive to things. At least in my opinion. I saw this really long video about it once. Um, I could send it to you if you want to, but I don't know if you care that much. Eh, I'd be fine to hear about it. Because I'm interested, because that's, that's also the first time I've seen, you know, Lore Olympus in any light other than, like, the most popular thing on Webtoons. Which yeah. it, like, I'm pretty sure categorically is. I mean, I wish I could read web comics. Can't. Like, yeah. Like, I don't know. It's hard for me to just. It's hard for me to remember to do. I guess. Oh, okay. Like this stuff, I started reading. Like I started reading the, uh, you know, JoJo Part Seven. So I started reading uh, the like, Drawfy Ladies Book Club comics. You know, st stuff that I'm interested in. Stuff I want to, you know, see. I want to read. Mm -hmm. But then I, like, I don't know. You know, like, reading a physical book is much easier for me. Yeah, I feel so when it's something I have to go to a web page and scroll, I'm like... Eh. I mean, I downloaded the, um, the Overlord light novel translations. Mm -hmm. Um, and I have the exact same thing. If this was an act if it was an actual book, I could read it no problem. But, like, I have to go to my computer, I have to bring it up and choose to do that over, like, other things I could be doing on my computer. It's... it's rough. Fetch with Rough Ruffman. <laughs> Did either of you know about that? No. I saw the. I mean, I oh, saw wait. there's a Defunct Land video about yeah. it. Yeah. Is a video about it? Like, a, like recently, oh. there's Defunct Land. Yes, I, I did actually see that in my recommendations as well. I thought, maybe I'll watch that later, but I didn't click on it or anything. I mean, I, I made the reference because, like, y'all y y know my dad's the PBS guy. Um, and that was a PBS show, right? <laughs> yeah. So um, there was a point in time where, like, my dad was bringing home a bunch of free Rough Ruffman merch that they were handing out at work. And I had, like, you know, the first three episodes of Rough Ruffman for free on, like, yeah. DVD. And I, I, I had, like, a... 
at one point I had a really good chance actually of um, being a contestant on the show. Contestant? Yeah, because it was like a game show, wasn't it? I, I, I guess know. I don't know enough about it. You would know more than either of us right now. Because I'm pretty sure it was it was like a it was a game. It was you, you know like the what like the the Le- Legend of the Hidden Temple, I think. Oh yeah. yeah. Thing like you know the choices are yours and yours alone. It was kind of similar to that, but I think less physically active and more of Rough Ruffman the character, who was like a dog that could talk. Um, but yeah, so it was like a game show where you could win probably. Um, and I, I because of like what was going on, part of that was like oh I had like, like you know you have a really good chance to be on the show I think, um, which didn't happen. It's, it's another one of those, like, your dad's at PBS, so there's weird shit that can happen to you. Like how I was in an Arthur episode. Well, but, you know, yeah. a personalized Arthur episode. Yes, yeah, a personalized Arthur episode. Which, uh, God, I wish I could find that again. It's like, now that I think about it, I just want to... I want to know how the person did it. Like, y- you know, more so than the obvious answer of, like, editing. Like, I want to see how good of quality it actually was. Look at it through non-little-child nostalgia goggles. 